Pay attention to your pain Reach out and find your comfort Take a walk and play some music Make the time to start the healing Let the healing begin Let the healing to the sky and breathe it in Look to the sky and breathe it in Feel the sunshine on your skin Feel the sunshine on your quality. And let your life resume again And let your life resume again Pay attention to your pain Reach out and find your comfort Take a walk and play some music Make the time to start the healing Let the healing begin Let the healing begin Look to the sky and breathe it in Look to the sky and breathe it in Feel the sunshine on the skin Feel the sunshine on and let your life resume again Let your life resume again Pay attention to your pain Reach out and find your comfort Take a walk and play some music Make the time to start the healing let the healing begin, let the healing begin. Look to the sky and breathe it in, look to the sky and breathe it in. Feel the sunshine on your skin, feel the sunshine on your skin. And let your life resume again, and let your life resume again.
Day spirit, thank you for this day. The ceiling, the ceiling, the ceiling day. The ceiling, the ceiling, the ceiling day. Thank you for this day, spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing. day spirit thank you for this day this beautiful easter day it is wonderful to have you all here thank you for joining us for our easter sunday service here on zoom and also live streaming on facebook we are so delighted to see your faces especially delighted to see your easter bonnets and i'm just so glad that you are here with us as we celebrate this very special day. As you come on, uh, you may notice that you are being put on mute and that is so that you don't have to worry about any background noise. As always, uh, there will be two opportunities to unmute yourself. One is when I ask for a volunteer for the Daily Word, and I'll be doing that in a few minutes. If you'd like to read the Daily Word for today, please uh, go ahead and grab that or look it up on uh, dailyword.org and let me know by waving at the camera when I ask for a volunteer if you'd like to do that. We also have a time in our service where we ask for spoken prayer requests. So if you would like to speak yours aloud, again, just wave at the camera uh, so we know to unmute you and you can share your prayers or your prayer requests with your spiritual family here so that we can support you. And for now, you got here and let yourself relax. Uh, just know that whatever it is that you have going on after the service can wait for this hour where you just connect with us virtually and connect with the God of your understanding. 
Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we celebrate the truth that our God is love as expressed in Unity's foundation statement, which you see on your screen, and I invite you to read it along with me. There is only one presence and one power, active as the universe and as my life, God the good, omnipotent. So take another deep breath now, become comfortable, and gently release any cares of the day. Because the only thing that you need to do in this hour is to open yourself up to the love and goodness of the divine as you relax into this sacred time and space, into this sacred day uh, celebrated by Unity Spiritual Center. For 75 years now, we at Unity Spiritual Center have celebrated and honored people of every culture, of every creed, of every religion, of every race, of every age, and every lifestyle. Knowing that there are many paths to God, many faces of God, many names for God, but only one God. Seeing through eyes of oneness and acknowledging our oneness, we know that God indwells all people and is expressed through each of us in unique, special, and individual ways. Unity offers positive, practical, progressive spiritual teachings and tools that honor the universal truth in all religions and respects each individual's right to choose a spiritual path. And so now, like I do every Sunday, I'm going to light our worship candle. And that just kind of gives you a visual aid for all the beautiful statements that I just made. And like all good things, sometimes we have to wait for that. But I've got a full box of matches, so one of these better works. <laughs> There we go. Oh, the light, the light returns, but it just went out. Okay. Well, I really didn't mean this to be a comedy routine, but um, we do what we can here. And if we can't, we will imagine that flame. We will use our power of imagination to imagine the flame, but it looks like we are now in business. So let me hold this up to the camera as I always do. And every day, but especially on this day, remember that you have a divine flame within. That's the reason why we attempt to light the candle so that you can actually see the flame. And just imagine a flame like this within you, a divine flame, because you are an expression of God. You are an individualized spark of God. And God does God's work in the world through the movements of your heart and your hands. And our vision here at Unity Spiritual Center and the opportunity for you and for each one of us here is that you discover the power within you to create the life of your dreams, that you have peace of mind and deep happiness, that you enjoy joyous and loving relationships with yourself, the spirit, and with others, that you spend your days doing what you love and feel called to do, even if it's just a portion of your day. But most of all, that you know that your life matters, that you make a difference, and that the world is a better place because you're here. So let us pause now to listen and hear a musical selection performed by USC's music director, Michael Hatfield. We also have a very special guest today uh, and I will let Michael introduce her. We are um, really blessed by having uh, this 
talented performer join us. So Michael, if you will introduce Dana, that would be I great. will do exactly that. So it, my, my favorite thing to say is that Dana and I have done many Easter's over the years at Unity in all sorts of interesting configurations. We've done recorders, we've done flutes, we've done vocals, we've done everything. We're kind of throwing in the kitchen sink today. And uh, what we're about to play is, is the tune that must be played on, on Easter, for sure. And what is also pleasantly surprising for all the female singers out there, it's in your key. So everybody, I expect at home to sing along. Here we go. enjoyed that too, um, please make your reactions known by either using the reaction button that you see on your computer or um, applauding at the camera so that Michael and Dana know uh, just how much you enjoyed that beautiful hymn that we love to sing every Easter. So now as we continue to get comfortable and relax even more deeply into this time of worship, prayer, and meditation, let us open our hearts to receive the message of today's daily word. I am scrolling through the gallery now to see if I have a volunteer to read the daily word for today. If you'd like to do that, please indicate uh, that to me by waving. Oh, I see Juanita with her hand out and her hand up and her beautiful Easter bonnet on. So Juanita, I'm going to put the spotlight on you. And if you can unmute yourself. I love your bonnet. That is just beautiful. But yeah, we can't, we can't hear you. So if you're having can't, can't unmute. Okay, well, I'm going to look for another possible volunteer. If um, I, there, there we, we go. go. We well, got you. you made it. Uh, yep. okay. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> okay, arise. I welcome my <coughs> re resurrection experience. In Mark gospel, the women who came to anoint Jesus' body on Easter morning flee in terror when, after finding the tomb empty, they are told Jesus had arrived, arisen. Stories from early Christian communities describe a transformation from fear to faith as Jesus' early followers 
came to realize that not even death can hold the Christ spirit captive. With joyous faith, Jesus follows, greet one another, declaring, he is risen and affirming he is risen indeed. Letting go of fear, I say yes to my resurrection experience. Guided by the <coughs> resurrecting powers of Christ's spirit within me, I am set free from the tomb of lack and limitations. I follow Jesus into the light <coughs> of new awareness, a new dimension of life. Christ is risen in me. From Mark 16, verse 6. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been risen. He is not here. Bless all of you. Thank you so much, Juanita. Okay, thank you. So now I'm putting it back on our gallery view as we move into our prayer time. Unity Spiritual Center of San Francisco is a center of prayer and healing. And as always, uh, your prayer requests are welcome, uh, whether they are sent in by email or snail mail, whether they are called in, <clears throat> excuse me, and left on our answering machine, or of course, um, spoken here during our Sunday service. So knowing that members of our community have uh, called in, written in for prayer, um, and keeping one particular prayer request in mind, and that is from the Mucalos, um, Mike, uh, our, our wonderful elder, who I believe at this point is 95 years old, has had some recent health challenges, and Rose has uh, requested prayer for him and, of course, for her as his um, support person. Uh, let's keep the mucolos in our hearts and everyone else who has uh, requested prayer uh, during this past week, knowing that divine order is taking place for each person um, concerned and that each person is also enfolded always in divine love. And now is your opportunity to make your prayers audible if you wish to do so. So again, uh, if you would like to do that, please indicate that to me and I can um, call on you to speak your prayer request aloud. Uh, you're also welcome to put them in the chat and we will um, read the prayer requests that come in through the chat as well. Uh, before we begin, as always, we will have Michael uh, take us through our beautiful a uh, song that accompanies our prayer time. And as always, after each prayer request, we will follow it by singing, Your Prayer is My Prayer Too. We are connected. We are connected. By the heart. Where do you end? Where do you end? Where do I start? Where do I start? Whatever you feel. Whatever you feel. I feel too. I feel too. You're a part of me. You're a part of me. I'm a part of Your prayer is my prayer to Your prayer is my prayer Your prayer is my prayer to Your prayer is my prayer to And we have a prayer request from Josephine uh, asking for prayers for her father's health to stabilize. Your prayer is my prayer to. Your prayer is my prayer to. We 
have a prayer request from Mary, who's asking for prayers for her sister-in-law, uh, Diane, who has gone into hospice care and will transition shortly. Your prayer is my prayer too. Luke is asking for prayers for his friend, Tracy Hawkins, who died a couple of weeks ago. Your prayer is my prayer too. And Jerry, go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, I, prayers for my niece, Kim, and her family, her husband and two kids. Uh, they've all got varying degrees of COVID um, and all tested positive. Your That's prayer is my prayer too. see if there are any yes Karen go ahead and and please give us your prayer request all the way from Switzerland yes for um, my sister Ellie uh, she had knee surgery about 10 days ago and um, just prayer for a speedy recovery where she has a full and free movement your prayer is my prayer to Susan is asking for prayers for her friend, Freddie, who faces multiple health challenges. Your prayer is my prayer. Okay. Any other prayer requests that people have today? they'd like to share out loud i think luke is holding up his hand yeah luke go ahead and unmute yourself let's see i'm gonna scroll through there is here just a little asking for for prayers for healing in families where there is conflict your prayer is my prayer too judy is asking for prayers that god leads her to a wonderful new job where she can be of service your prayer is my prayer Other prayer requests that you'd like to speak aloud or put in the chat. Well, as you know, we have a time where we express our blessings, things that we're thankful for, uh, grateful for. Um, anything that we'd like to share with our spiritual family so that we can celebrate uh, along with you. If there's something you'd like to share, this would be that, that time to do it. And again, you can use the chat or um, lift your hand and we'll call on you to speak those things aloud if you'd like. Karen, go ahead. Hi. I am very grateful for a beautiful spring, cloudless spring day for all of the trees that are greening and for all of the flowers that are blooming. I am so grateful. Thank you. We're grateful to have you here, making us an international community. <laughs> um, we 
Wendy is grateful to light a candle for her beautiful mother, Helen, and today is the 10th anniversary of her passing. Any other blessings? Things that you are, things or people you are grateful for. Uh, Juanita, do you have your hand up? Go ahead and unmute yes. yourself. I'm grateful for a whole lot of new family members that came into my life just within 2020. I'm so mm -hmm. grateful that I am feel like that I have expanded in the world. Oh, Thank that's you. wonderful. Thank you. And Ruben and Joseph. Mark Schmies, uh, has said, had put her hand up. Okay. Go, go ahead, Catherine. You just have to unmute. unmute yourself. If you can unmute yourself, we can listen. We can hear your prayer. Oh, yeah. Okay. Can you hear me now? I can yes. hear you. Yeah. Okay. So it's wonderful to see everyone. Really wonderful to see everyone. I just want to say how grateful I am for that. And then also, I want to say a prayer and a blessing for my mother who goes to surgery tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And just knowing that all of you will be praying for her and myself and all my friends will be praying for her. I know she will be fine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 88 is just a number and she's young at heart and that's what matters. And I love her so much. Oh, well, your mom's one of the youngest people I know, and we will definitely be lucky in our prayers tomorrow. And so great to see you, Catherine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. you. I'm making coffee. I'm double dueting. She oh, just said it. <laughs> so good to see we had trouble getting online because I accidentally deleted <laughs> your your regular weekly message to me with the link. You know. Aww, yeah. Lovely to see both of you. Happy Easter. We'll be thinking about you tomorrow, Lakshmi. Yes, okay. Yeah, here's and uh Ruben and Josephine have prayers. Um of gratitude for the love and care that Reuben, this is from Josephine, uh, that Reuben has shown in taking care of the boys as Josephine has been away to be with her dad at the hospital. And she is expressing gratitude for the surgeons, doctors, nurses, and therapists caring for uh, her dad. And Susan is so grateful and so blessed to have such caring and loving children and grandchildren. Terry is grateful for her loving boyfriend, family, and friends. Any other blessings, gratitudes, thanksgivings that you would like to express to your spiritual family here? Sylvia is grateful that her mom's health is stable and continues to improve. Thank you, Spirit, and for all your prayers. So glad to hear that, Sylvia. And so glad that you're joining us, even though you are mobile and in a car. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, Wendy, go ahead and unmute yourself. I am grateful for our unity community and for the birds that are coming into our backyard. More and more birds are coming. Oh, Even wonderful. in the middle of this pandemic, oh, they're that's... there for us. It's a, it's, a, it's a sound of hope, isn't it? When you hear birds, birds singing. Thank you, Wendy. Anyone else? Any other prayers of gratitude? Judy, so grateful to have this community to spend Easter with. I think we all feel the same way. We all feel blessed by that. Thank you, Judy. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. 
I am so grateful. I am so blessed. Oh, we give thanks for this opportunity to bless and be blessed in spirit. We give thanks for the knowledge that when we ask, it will be given to us. When we seek, we will find. When we knock, the door will be opened to us. We give thanks for the feelings of peace and comfort and connection that are ours right now. Uh, as we scroll through the gallery, as we see our friends, old and new, and we give thanks for the privilege of praying for others in our community, in our nation, and around the globe. And again, we affirm that no matter what appearances are, no matter what anyone might be facing, we know that they are enfolded in divine love and the divine order is taking place. And so it is. Amen. I've got a roof over my head I've got a warm place to sleep Some nights I lie awake Counting gifts Instead of counting sheep I've got a heart that can hold I've got a mind that can think There may be times when I lose the light And let my spirit sink But I can't stay depressed When I remember city of strangers I've got a family of friends no matter what rocks and brambles fill the way I know that they will stay until the end I feel a hand holding my It's not a hand you can see But on the road to the promised land This hand will shepherd me Through delight and despair Holding tight and always there It's not that I don't want a lot or hope for more or dream of more but giving thanks for what I've got makes me so much happier than keeping score in a world that can bring pain I will still take each chance for Our feet can learn to 
dance Whatever stone life may sling We can moan or we can sing Grateful, grateful, truly grateful That was beautiful. And I know that uh, all of you are sharing my gratitude and having Dana join us today. Thank you so much for your beautiful, beautiful voice sharing it with us today, Dana. And, and I know Michael is grateful to have you in the studio with him that you too can perform live and what a special thing that is. It really feels like new life doesn't it new new possibilities to see you two together so so glad that you're here and just want to say good morning to everyone and of course happy easter this is the second easter that we are celebrating on zoom unlike all the previous easters we can remember but this easter does feel a little bit different from last year doesn't it um just for the reasons i spoke about the fact that we're seeing dana and michael together in the studio and different signs of life are cropping up all around us we're starting to see the buds of nature and, and the new life promised uh, by Mother Nature every year, but they're mirrored by the signs of life that we are finally seeing in our society, aren't they? Last year, we had just begun our journey of sheltering in place, and we had no idea how long it would last. I would imagine most of us thought it might be a month, maybe it would last into the summer, I don't think any of us ever anticipated that we would be sheltering in place for literally a year and that we would spend a year apart from each other in order to protect ourselves and each other from a global pandemic. This has been a historical event that no one alive today will ever forget. To borrow a colloquialism, it has been epic. And I choose that word carefully. I want to read you the definition of the word epic. It means noting or pertaining to a long poetic composition, usually centered upon a hero, in which a series of great achievements or events is narrated in elevated style. The story of Jesus, whose resurrection from the tomb of death is the very reason for the Easter celebration was epic. He was certainly a hero, yes? And on this day, this Easter day, in which we're all sheltering in place instead of being together as a spiritual community or with our extended family or friends, we are invited to think about how our lives can be epic too, how we can be heroes. Because in unity on Easter, we don't just focus on the resurrection of Jesus, we focus on the resurrection that is possible for each one of us, our ability to begin again, to expand our vision of what is possible in our lives. And God knows after a full year of sheltering in place, that we need to remember those possibilities. So right now, I want to ask you to close your eyes just for a few moments so that you can really take in the words that I'm about to say without any distraction. Listen, my beloved, today is Easter. 
Let your heart soar. Let wings of faith and freedom lift your spirit to new heights. This is a day of renewal. This is a day of celebration. This is a day to celebrate the new you. Today is a day of new beginnings, a new life, a new sense of love and spiritual power, a new sense of freedom. With fresh understanding, you begin your life anew. You are transformed. You are a new expression of the Christ. Beloved, celebrate this day. Celebrate the new you. Now that's from an old community booklet titled Your Higher Calling. And I read it every Easter because it expresses the reason we celebrate Easter. That realization that we are expressions of the Christ, of the divine. Earlier, we sang the hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today. In unity, we understand that to mean Christ consciousness, the Christ consciousness that dwells in every person. And when I light our worship candle every Sunday, as I tell you every Sunday, I do it because I want you to see that flame flicker, to really take in that you Every one of us has that inner Christ light, that flame within. And if we have a hard time getting that, really accepting that because of habits or behaviors that we don't feel good about, Easter reminds us every year that resurrection follows crucifixion. The Easter story is about an old way being crucified so that something new can be born. The Easter story is a reminder that no matter what happens to us, it is not final. We can look beyond appearances and recognize that there is a divine plan unfolding. And our task is to hold on to that vision until we see our own resurrection. Now this year, we've had to hold on tight to any sort of vision, sometimes with all that we've got. Over the past year, we have probably experienced hours, if not days or months, struggling to believe that there is a divine plan unfolding. We have seen so much devastation around us, people around the world and in our very cities getting sick and dying, losing jobs and fearing eviction, wondering how they're going to feed their families. For many people, this time still feels like a crucifixion, not a resurrection. And even if we ourselves are not facing those things, we feel them. As spiritual beings, we feel them. And many of us still have days, perhaps, of feeling down or even depressed during this time. And so just to give permission, if any of you have, I, I certainly admit that I have had days and times of feeling down. And I imagine that probably everyone else here would say the same thing. But here's the good news. As our Unity co-founder, Charles Fillmore, said, every time we rise to the realization of eternal indwelling life, making union with the Father mind, the resurrection of Jesus takes place within us. Every Time. So as we explore the Easter story of crucifixion and resurrection from this metaphysical perspective, what do we begin to see? If the resurrection of Jesus takes place within us when we rise to the realization of eternal indwelling life, 
What does that actually mean for our lives? It promises us that no matter what we're facing, no matter what, rather than a seeming end, we will be born to an aliveness greater than before. We will go from that night to the day that that screen before us is showing. It promises that from the ashes of something that appears to be over, we instead are given a fresh, heightened beginning. It promises that we can always begin a new story, that today, on Easter Day, and on every day, we can always celebrate the first day of the rest of our lives. The Easter story shows us in a profound way that death of any kind is not an ending, but an opportunity for a divine awakening. In fact, as many of us know, some of our greatest personal crucifixions have revealed the possibility for our greatest personal resurrections. And there are many of us who also believe that the collective crucifixions that we have experienced around the world during this pandemic have the potential to be resurrected, reborn into us, creating more compassionate and just societies. We have seen significant ev evidence of that this year through the Black Lives Matter and more recently through the Stop Asian Hate movements, we are seeing that resurrection into more just and compassionate communities. And we are seeing other signs of hope and new life all around us. More and more people are getting vaccinated, more and more businesses and other institutions are opening up. We don't have to imagine a resurrection as we did last year. We are seeing signs of the rock that pandemic rock rolling away before our very eyes. So I ask you right now, what new life can you allow during this time of transition from sheltering in place to setting foot in the new normal of our lives to awaken in you? In many ways, our lives as we knew them before the sheltering in place mandate of March 17th, 2020 are gone. We are all collectively stepping into new lives now. So what do we want them to be about? A deeper commitment to love, to be of service, the fuller expression of your creativity, a renewed commitment to your emotional, spiritual, and physical well being, a deeper discernment into what is truly valuable in your life, a closer relationship with the God of your being. Today and every day, you can commit the fullness and the wholeness of who you are to spirit, to the God of your being. Today, you can commit to finding the dawn of hope, even in the darkness. And as we have talked about at different times during the year, you can commit to being the hope. Today, you can restart your epic journey. You can be the hero of your own life, particularly during this time of transition. Just keeping a positive vision in itself is a heroic act. So let us affirm together that on this day, this very morning, a resurrection is occurring for each and every one of us. With Charles Fillmore, let us affirm, in unity with Christ, I realize that I am resurrected into the life 
light and power of God. And so it is. Thank you, God, and happy, happy Easter. So for our guided meditation today, I invite you to lean back wherever you are, whether it's a chair or a headboard, a couch, just to rest more fully in it, to close your eyes, to get comfortable, and to take a few deep breaths as we celebrate Easter. Yes, today we are celebrating Easter. The resurrection of Jesus is a symbol to us of the reality of the new life of spring that always follows the cold darkness of winter. As we might plant a garden, we need to explore the seeds of potentiality that quietly wait to be released in our life. That the current circumstances of sheltering in place may not allow us right now to break our dreams totally into fruition. We can examine those seeds and begin to vision the new ways in which we want our lives to blossom. So in the sacred silence of your hearts, ask yourself, what are the kernels of excitement or hope within me that want to be birthed? Can I let go of old thinking in order to embrace new patterns, new models of being in this world? Who are the people and the places that could be of most help to me as I seek to live into the newness I feel growing within me? What is the most important thing I can do today to begin the work of developing new possibilities, new potential? Know that you can always revisit these questions and that guidance will always be found. 
Know that you are deeply loved and tenderly held and that your unique contribution is needed by all of us. And take a moment now to really feel that place of possibility within you. Let yourself bathe in the excitement and hope of your new beginnings. This is a feeling that you can come back to anytime you want. And when you're ready, knowing that you can return to your inner sanctuary at any time you choose, and knowing that you can feel that beautiful sense of hope and excitement that is conveyed so well by the slide that you see before you. Begin now to return to our time together by moving your fingers, your feet, taking another deep breath. And when you are ready, coming back to waking consciousness and opening your eyes. So I am going to take a look at all of you, our beautiful community, as we affirm who we are as a community, what we are on this Easter day and always. And I invite you to join with me in saying these words. And of course, we love the hand gestures that go with. Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we are an ocean of love. Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we have an inspiring vision, an exciting mission, and compelling values by which we strive to live. Our vision is... Centered in God, we co-create a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. Our mission is, we are a creative, joy-filled spiritual community dedicated to healing, inspiring, and transforming the lives of all people through prayer, education, and love. And our values are, we are spirit-led, generous with resources, inclusive, joyously creative, and guided by integrity. And feeling inspired by our vision, mission, and values, feeling enriched by what we've experienced here today and what we will continue to experience during our hospitality hour following the service. Let us take time now to be a channel for enrichment through our generous ties and love offerings. As Michael and Dana share another beautiful song, please do take that time to write out a check to USC or to log on to our website. Uh, Jerry has just put the direct link into the chat so you can um, click there and make a donation online if you choose. Thank you for remembering that our expenses do continue throughout this time as we look ahead to when we'll be able to uh, open our doors and celebrate together. So let's take time now to bless our ties and our love offerings. If you are doing it virtually, you can imagine it being in your hands. If you have a check, you can put it in your hands or next to your heart as you say your offertory prayer. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. Thank you, God. When lonely 
feelings chill the morals of your mind just think if winter comes can spring be far behind beneath the deepest snows the secret of a rose is merely that it knows you must believe in spring just as a tree its leaves will reappear it knows its emptiness is just a time of year the frozen mountain dreams of april's melting streams how crystal clear it seems you must believe in spring You must believe in love And trust it's on its way Just as the sleeping rose Awaits the kiss of May You must believe in love and trust it's on its way. Just as the sleeping rose awaits the kiss of May. So in a world of snow, of things that come and go, well, what you think you know, you can't be certain of. You must believe in spring and Thank you so much. What a beautiful Easter celebration you have given us, Dana and Michael. <clears throat> Let us bless our offering by saying our beautiful prayer that we say every Sunday and really feel our way into these amazing words. 
Spirit of the living God, bless the acts of our hands, our minds, our hearts. May everything offered here at Unity Spiritual Center be a reflection of all that is good within us. Grant us the courage to patiently listen for the stirring of your presence. Enliven our spirits with humor. Fill us with reverence for one another and gratitude for our diversity. May unity, beauty, and truth be the fruit of all we do. And so it is. Amen. So I just want to make a few announcements. As always, we are going to have uh, our hospitality hour directly following the service. I believe there's going to be a little Easter parade that's, that's going to be um, a bridge between the service and our hospitality hour. So you will not want to go anywhere. Just stay on the same Zoom link. Uh, so you can be sure to see the full um, a festival of finery that is going to pass before your eyes. We are still doing our daily word um, readings and guided meditations every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at noon. Please join us for that. Again, the same Zoom link. Even if you can only come once or twice, um, we would love to have you. This is not a regular thing. Just show up when you can come and it's only 15 minutes. Uh, so you don't have to spend too much of your of your day um, away from what you are working on. We finished our book study last Wednesday, but we have a very special offering that we're going to uh, offer uh, open up to everyone in the community. And that is that I've asked the author of the book, who is a former minister of USC, Reverend Sharon Connors, to join us on Wednesday at four o'clock uh, to do questions and answers, just to talk about uh, her experience of the 12 powers, which is what the book focused on. And so she very graciously agreed to do that. This is open to everyone. You don't have to have read the book or to have attended the class to come. It's just something that she's generously offering us so that we can learn more um, about the 12 powers from from the source, from the person who we, um, whose book we just read. So that again will be this Wednesday, four o'clock, same Zoom link. And as always, we are so grateful to uh, Reverend Brock for offering us on-call um, prayer chaplain hours. And those are always posted in our e-letter and also on our website if you would like to make an appointment with River Brock for prayer. So with that, it's time to bless our children. I'm going to open this up because I bet we've got some kids that are here to bless. There they are. I'm going to put the spotlight on you. Um, there they are. And let's see, I'm going to take it off me and see if there is, uh, I know Annette, I saw her come on. So let's see if we can find Alex in there. Alex there, if you see him, let me know. Um, and I don't know if Cassie is with Kelly. All right, but for now, let's go ahead and bless these kids that we've got in front of us. Um, Alonzo and Santiago, we love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the presence of God empowering you to do great things. Thank you, God. Thanks for joining us every week. It's so great to see your faces, and you are the reason we are here. Um, you are our future. So lovely to see you. And with that, why don't we listen? Actually, why don't we sing along to our peace song? And let it begin with me. 
Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as creator, family all are we. Let me walk with my family in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me, let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace, eternal and let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. So as we go forward into this beautiful day, into this very special Easter day, let us remember that whatever it is that is being birthed in our hearts, we have the power to create it because the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever I am, God is, and all is well. Thank you, God. Happy Easter. And as I said, we're going to have a um, hospitality hour as we always do. But before that, we are going to have our Easter bonnet parade. Now, Michael, did you have thoughts for how this was going to happen? And you know what? Maybe you could just highlight people as we go around. and Because okay. uh, the tune's going to last for about the three minutes that it takes for us to transition. So... Go ahead and just spotlight some people and have some fun. Awesome. And, uh, that's what I think. And I, and I have the lyrics up there for everybody to sing along, okay? Great. That sounds great. Shall we do it? Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Everybody ready? Here we go. <laughs> In your Easter bonnet With all the frills upon it You'll be the cutest lady in the Easter parade. I'll be all in clover, and when they look you over, I'll be the proudest fellow in the Easter parade on the avenue. What avenue? Oh, Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue. The photographers will snap us, and you'll find that you're in the road to groove your oh, I could write a sonnet about your Easter bonnet, and of the girl I'm taking to the Easter parade. Soft shoe right here. Part on the avenue. What avenue? Oh, that's Fifth Avenue. Oh, right, Fifth <laughs> Avenue. The photographers will snap us, and you'll find that you're in the road to groove your oh, I could write a sonnet about your Easter bonnet. And of the girl I'm taking to the Easter parade. Shave and a haircut, two bits. 
<laughs> awesome. We did it. Did do it. That is awesome. Thank you, everybody, for wearing your Easter bonnets. That was so much fun. <laughs> that was just great. All right. Should we take like a minute or two just to go grab a cup of coffee?